Summary of the Lieutenant by Kate Grenville Daniel Rook knows he is different for the first time when he is five years old. Rook doesn't learn his multiplication tables at school. Instead, he writes down prime numbers in a special notebook, which his teacher eventually takes away. A few weeks later, a guy named Dr. Adair goes to Rook's house to ask him about the prime numbers. Dr. Adair sees that Rook has promise, so he gives him a spot at the Naval Academy a few years later. On his first night at the Academy, Rook is too upset to cry. No one there cares about math, and because his father is a clerk, the other boys pick on him. Over time, Rook learns to hide how smart he is. He learns four languages, finds out he likes science and math, and learns to play the organ. All of these topics interest Rook because they make sense. When Rook is 13, he meets Dr. Vickery, the Astronomer Royal. Dr. Vickery is as awkward as Rook, which makes Rook feel better about himself. When Rook leaves school two years later, he writes to Dr. Vickery to ask for a job. Dr. Vickery tells him that there aren't many jobs for astronomers. When Rook joins the Marines, he is put on the ship Resolution. On his first day, he meets Talbot Silk, who says that they'll be friends. Silk is a friendly speaker, and Rook learns how to make small talk and interact with other people by watching him. When the Resolution stops in Antigua, Rook sees slaves for the first time. He thinks about how they are just like other people and not valuable things. One afternoon, Rook sees a captain who was plotting a mutiny be hanged. The frightening experience shows Rook that to be successful in the British military system, he will have to be heartless and not care about other people. In the fall of that year, the Resolution fights a French ship. Silk and Rook see that Private Truby's bottom half is completely destroyed, and Rook is also badly hurt. Rook goes back to Portsmouth to get better, but he feels like he has no future there. Two years later, Dr. Vickery writes to Rook and suggests that he sign up to go to New South Wales with the First Fleet as the astronomer. When Rook finds out that Silk will also join, he agrees right away. When Rook and Silk see each other for the first time since the fight, they understand that seeing Private Truby's injuries brought them closer together. Silk tells Rook that he's been asked to write a book about his time in New South Wales. Rook agrees with Silk that neither of them is cut out for life in the military. Rook is a careful scientist on his way to New South Wales. He works with both Lieutenant Gardiner and James Gilbert, who is the Commodore. Gilbert is always in pain and doesn't seem happy because of it. When the fleet gets to New South Wales, Rook makes sure that he, Gilbert, Surgeon Waymark, and Gardiner are on the first boat to land. When the men get to beach, they meet five locals and give them things like beads and mirrors. When the Indians don't seem to be pleased, Waymark shows them how good he is at shooting by shooting through one of their shields. The locals run off into the woods as the four Englishmen laugh. After a few weeks, Gilbert gets a letter naming him Governor of New South Wales. He reads it to all the troops and prisoners. After that, Rook finds a high cliff where he wants to build a telescope so he won't have to watch over the prisoners. He finds the right place, but at first, Governor Gilbert tries to stop Rook from building the house. Rook is able to persuade Gilbert that watching a comet forecast by Dr. Vickery is the most important thing to do, and Gilbert agrees. It takes months to build the observatory, but when it's done, Rook finally feels like he can be himself there. He has Sunday dinner with the other officers every week and tries to avoid the governor, who sometimes joins them. One week, the governor says that he is going to look for more rich land in the woods by going on a trip. Rook and Silk both offer to help. On the second day of the trip, the governor finds an area that is good for farming. That night, a prisoner named Brugden comes back with a black eye after going shooting. When Rook tells Gilbert that the natives attacked him, Rook thinks he is lying. A week later, Gardiner comes to see Rook at his telescope while he is taking readings. He tells Rook that Gilbert told him to catch two native men so that the newcomers can learn their language. Gardiner says that he wishes he hadn't done what he was told and taken them against their will and with force. Rook tells Gardiner of their job as soldiers, but he also wonders what he would have done in Gardiner's place. 
The next morning, Rook goes to the town to see the Native Americans who have been caught. He finds Gilbert and Silk talking to two Native guys who are both tied down. One man seems interested, while the other looks angry. When Rook finds out that Silk is working as a speaker, he gets angry and wishes he had been given that job. A few weeks later, Silk goes to see Rook to tell him that the locals have gotten away. Then, since Gardner wouldn't tell Silk how they were caught, he asks Rook to tell him. Rook changes the subject because he knows that the truth is very dangerous. When winter comes, Rook starts sleeping during the day so he can watch for Dr. Vickery's comet at night. When it's clear that the comet won't come, Rook starts planning new stars to explain why he needs to stay at the telescope and not go with the others. One morning, Rook wakes up to find two native guys standing in front of his hut. He waits and sits, and then Warunjan comes over, sits down next to Rook, and tells him that his tribe is called Katagal. Soon, women and children come to Rook's hut to look around. One child, a young girl, seems to enjoy words as much as Rook does. She shows him how to say rain and tells him her name is Tagarin. Rook sets up a way to write down the Katagal language. When the locals come back a week later, Tagarin, Bonita, and Warrigan teach Rook different phrases and parts of the body. Tagarin and Rook are both very happy that they are learning to talk to each other. A week later, Silk goes to see Rook and says that the governor is going to send him to Rose Hill to watch over the farms there. Rook thinks he should tell Silk about Tagarin, but he doesn't get the chance. Silk tells Rook that Gardner was sent to Norfolk Island to start a new farming population there. Rook wonders if Gardner is being punished. As time goes on, Rook gets to know the locals and becomes close friends with them. Warunjan teaches Rook how to use words, but Tagarin and Rook talk like real people. One afternoon, she runs naked and cold into the hut. He checks to make sure she's clean and then tries to put his jacket around her shoulders. She gets out of it by twirling, and Rook feels bad, like he broke her privacy. Tagarin tells her that if she stays naked, she'll just dry faster. A few minutes later, the other kids come and watch with great interest as Rook shaves. Tagarin tries to wash herself in the warm water after he's done, and Rook jokes that if she keeps doing it, she'll turn white. She spends the night with Warrigan in Rook's tent. Rook is happy and satisfied, and he thinks if this is how parents feel about their children. He writes down what happened each day in his log. A prisoner who stole potatoes is to be flogged in front of Rook and everyone else in the town. Warunjan is also there. When the flogger hits the prisoner, Warunjan jumps forward and tries to stop it. Rook understands that the English justice system isn't fair or noble, it's just cruel. Later that summer, Silk comes back from Rose Hill. As he looks through the things on Rook's table, he tells Rook how boring it was. Rook thinks he should tell Silk about Tagarin, but Silk finds Rook's notes before Rook can. Silk starts to look through the notes and soon finds Rook's story about the time Tagarin washed herself in his hut. Silk looks at Rook's few notes and wrongly thinks that he is sexually involved with Tagarin. Rook doesn't know how to describe his relationship with Tagarin, but he thinks that keeping it a secret has made it look bad. Silk tells Rook that the governor is worried about the safety of the village and that he should be careful around the natives. A week later, Tagarin, Tagir, and Warrigan run into Rook's hut crying and tell him that a soldier beat Tagir. Rook tries to picture himself talking to the ship captain who is to blame, but he can't. The girls seem to know that Rook won't defend them. After a week, Tagarin asks Rook to show her how to use his gun. He hesitates and then meets her halfway, firing the gun but not actually hitting anything. He stops her from taking the gun when she tries to ask him to show her more. She leaves, and Rook thinks that he will never see her again. He thinks that the papers are all he has left of their friendship now that she is gone. A local kills Brugden with a knife not long after. Rook isn't surprised, but he is surprised when Silk stops by and asks him to go with him on a punishment mission to catch Karangari, the native who speared Brugden, along with six other locals. Rook doesn't want to join, but Silk says he has to. 
He tells Rook that they won't be able to catch any locals because they are too smart, and then he leaves. Because Rook is worried about the trip, Bonita sends Tagarin to talk with him. When she gets there, Rook tells her that a search party for Karangari is coming. She warms her hands by the fire, and then she warms Rook's hands with her own. She tells him that this is called Puchawa. Rook thinks it means he can trust him. The next morning, Rook joins the mission to punish. When he sees how eager Silk is to catch the natives, he feels uncomfortable, but he also knows that Silk's plan is a good one. Silk's plan doesn't work out though, because when they get to the village, the locals are already gone. That night, Warunjan goes to the farmer's camp and shares fish with them. As Silk reaches into his pack, Rook tries to help him, but ends up dropping a knife and six bags out of the pack. Rook makes Silk tell him that the governor told Silk to kill six local people and bring their heads back. This makes Rook want to throw up. He then swims by himself at the beach. He decides that he can no longer take part in such violence while he is swimming. He goes to Sydney that night and tells the governor of his choice when he gets there. The governor is angry and sends him on the first ship back to England. Rook sees Tagarin on his last morning in New South Wales. She warms his hands again and watches his ship until it sails away. He thinks about her 50 years later on his deathbed in Antigua, where he spent most of his adult life saving slaves. Even though he is unable to see Tagarin, he imagines her to be a faraway star that is guiding him. About the author. Grenville is an Australian author. She was born in the year 1950. Grenville got her BA from the University of Sydney and then started working in the film industry editing documentaries. She lived in Europe for a short time, where she wrote and edited movies to make extra money. Then Grenville went to the University of Colorado Boulder to get her Master of Arts in Creative Writing. Bearded Ladies was Grenville's first collection of short stories. It was written after she moved back to Sydney. Grenville is best known for her book The Secret River, which came out in 2008. Both Aborigines and white Australians questioned her right to write about the settlement of Australia in the way she did in the book. However, this book is read in Australian high schools and colleges. She lives in Sydney. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.